Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. And welcome to another monthly comic haul. Let's check out the comics that I got this time around. First off, Vampirella number two from Dynamite Entertainment. I got the cosplay cover. I've been enjoying these cosplay covers that Dynamite has been putting out on their various books at the moment. Their Vampirella book, their Red Sonia book, Deja Torres. These cosplay covers looking really nice. This new Vampirella series has like literally 20 different covers. They're all amazing, but I went with the cosplay cover. Another Vampirella comic, Vampirella and Red Sonia meet Betty and Veronica. So yes, uh, these characters in completely different universes created by completely different characters in completely different decades have now met up. Vampirella and Red Sonia come to Riverdale to meet uh, Betty and Veronica because there's a cult uh, killing people. So I got issue number three. I also picked up number four. I love this Laura Braga art. It's so cartoony. It's so well drawn. I love the expressions and poses. I love the luminous quality of the light shining through the trees and hitting their skin with a little bit of shininess effect. Um, this is just this. I love this cover. Uh, this is by Braga. This one is by Faye. They're both amazing. I can't decide which one. Uh, why don't you vote up here? Which one do you like better? The Braga cover or the Faye cover? Over at IDW, I picked up Canto number one. This is a self-proclaimed uh, Wizard of Oz meets Dante's Inferno story. Um, unfortunately, I did not like it. I have a full review on my podcast. Find it on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, etc. Uh, the weekly VM Campus comic book club. Just search for VM Campus. I do the full review. Short answer, I didn't like it. There were just too many negatives in my grading scale that I just didn't like it. I like this cover, but that's about it. Oh, and I uh, realized that I got um, second printing cover here, but uh, no big deal. Again, I didn't really enjoy it. Usagi Yojimbo number three from IDW. Hard to believe that they've that uh, Stan Sakai has jumped over to IDW after being with Dark Horse for so very long. More than 180 issues at Dark Horse for 20 years, apparently. Um, and then we've got this character that's been around since 1984. So over 30 years, over 35 years. Now he goes over to IDW in full color. How do I feel about that? Mm, doesn't really need it. Uh, black and white always looked really nice. Sakai was always able to do great black and white work. And this is issue three of three of Bunrak. Uh, I like how even though the series is ongoing, there are short self-contained stories uh, in, in the book. What's this one about? Uh, killer puppets, perhaps? Moving over to Titan, I picked up Tank Girl Forever number six. I really feel that this, that this series is zooming by. I, I don't remember the previous issues very well. They're still under my read pile, and, I'm, and it's like, this is on issue number six already? Wow. Anyway, this is a Black Frog cover, which I love, even though I love Parsons' art a lot. I love it when they've got a Bullfrog cover because it can be realistic and weird and gross and interesting, and I just love it. So this is number six. The end of the line, unnatural number 12. Mirka Andolfo's magnum opus has come to its end. This is such an interesting story. The first issue, it's like, okay, it's like a fun, sexy, furry comic. It quickly uh, evolves into supernatural cults, government repression, violence, homophobia, just really deep issues about the main character, Leslie, having to endure. And here's the final issue. Got the regular cover by Andolfo, and then I also got the alternate cover. I kind of don't like so much realism in furry characters, uh, but still very uh, good quality. And uh, I was able to get both covers. The series is at a conclusion, which will be collected in a trade if you want the whole thing, or read the singles. Over at DC, I picked up this great Year of the Villain cover. 
Here's Cheetah in a very violent and bloody uh, pose. I love her, her shiny eyes, the classic, you know, feline uh, eye uh, glow, but here with a very powerful character that will tear you to shreds. One of Wonder Woman's classic foes is Wonder Woman number 77. Teen Titans number 33, the Alex Garner cover. I've loved his realistic take on these characters a lot. And this is uh, the story that picks up after the aftermath of the Teen Titans battling Lobo. Uh, Crush is, after all, Lobo's daughter. And they all had to team up to take the main man down. So what happens after this? Uh, interesting thing. So, so Teen Titans number 33. Over at the House of Ideas, we've got the Amazing Spider-Man, Venom, number one, 3D. Okay, that mishmash of words actually makes sense. This is a reprint of Amazing Spider-Man number 300, the first appearance of Venom from 1989, but now in 3D with Venom glasses. You too can have the vision of a Clintar. That is the name of the symbiotes on their own planet, if you didn't know. And it's just, again, the classic McFarlane. Uh, they kept the signature there. The classic McFarlane cover, but instead of it saying 300, 300, 300, it says 3D, 3D, 3D. And cover price of $7.99 compared to, what was it, a dollar? A dollar twenty-five when the original book came out in 87. Uh, so is it worth it? Nope. For the nostalgia, sure. Am I going to crack it open and view the images in 3Ds? Of course. The unbeatable Squirrel Girl is winding down. She had a long run, 50 issues, basically. That was a, a North Henderson and Renzi joint for a very long time until Derek Charm took over art duties. And now the series is running down. You don't want to mess with the Squirrel Scouts. Just a funny, gentle book that is, I think, great all ages that everyone should check out, at least a few is issues, because after all, she has beaten Thanos. No joke. The Amazing Spider-Man number 27 and number 28. I picked these up on the reg. I've been reading Spider-Man books since the 80s, and I'm not going to stop that tradition. Uh, so after their recent reboot, we're on number 27, which is actually legacy number 828. Can you believe that? Spencer Walker, Del Martin. One thing that I need to look up. Kev Walker is the artist, the interior artist. Is that the same Kev Walker that has worked on Magic Cards? Magic the Gathering? I've loved his art for over 20 years on Magic Cards. And I just kind of put two and two together. Is that Walker the same as this Walker? Tell me in the comments. Is Kev Walker moonlighting Magic Cards as well as Spider-Man comics? Anyway, then I got number 28. This is the variant edition. This is Bring On The Bad Guys. So, um, yep, Spider-Man has been a part of my life for a long time, and I'm going to keep that tradition going. Another tradition is rebooting Spider-Gwen every few months. This one I'm, I'm too cur curmudgeonly on. Um, this has been rebooted over so that it's Spider-Gwen number 51, issue number one. This is volume, what is this? There was, okay, volume one limited series, then volume two, but then Secret Wars rebooted it. And then it started again with the new Spider-Gwen. And she's not Spider-Gwen anymore. She was first uh, Spider-Gwen, Radioactive Spider-Gwen. Then it was Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider, and now just Ghost Spider. Why is Marvel insisting on calling her Ghost Spider? As Might, might as well call her Spider-Ghost, Spider-Man, Spider-Ham. I don't know. It's just like Ghost Spider seems way too weird to me. Spider-Woman, Spider-Girl. So um, anyway, this is the same creative team from the previous uh, series and just rebooted again. And apparently now she's going to hang out more at uh, in uh, Universe 616. Weird. Next up, the history of the Marvel Universe number two. So I kind of love these books that kind of... Uh, retell you the history of Marvel Comics. This is a company that's been around 80 years in various incarnations with a variety of characters throughout the decades and generations. And so here I picked up this uh, variant cover, Captain America on the top, Red Skull looking very forlorn. So uh, this is just a great like historical document uh, from the House of Ideas. 
Speaking of a great idea, why not make Marvel Comics number 1000? The Distinguished Competition did it. Anyway, so I don't know how they numbered this to be 1000. But uh, this is kind of amazing because, again, it's it's a year-by-year -year summation of the various Marvel titles from 1939 till the year 2019 with a variety of artists, creators, Gail Simone, Kafu, Priestville Noto, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Wow, this is just like, this is a huge comic book with so many creators, so many variant covers. I picked up uh, this one, Mark number 28, but there's just so many of them. I wanted to get a Spider-Man one, perhaps the Mike Allred one, but I ended up going with Captain America, this beautiful painted cover. It's just really cool. From the beginnings of Marvel Comics, the Human Torch from Marvel Comics number one, all the way to now. Really cool. So there you go. I picked up a bunch of Marvel Comics books that go into the past go into the future, things ending, going to the past, got some DC books, mostly for their covers, I love those, culmination of a series, continuation of another one, the beginning of a different series that's classic character, a brand new comic, not really worth it, uh, Vampirella, Red Sonia, cosplay, and uh, that's what I picked up this week. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Should I pick up any other books? What did you enjoy? Do you have any recommendations that I should be picking up in the months ahead? Let me know. If you like this video and all the other ones I create, consider heading over to patreon.com slash vmcampos and donating $1 uh, to keep the, the series going. I publish a lot of great content and even $1 really helps. It helps keep it going, helps keep me funded and motivated, and it really, really helps. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you on Draculon.